Hi, my name is Chris Boehner with FLIR Systems. Today I'm going to show you how to get started with FLIR's Examiner Max thermographic software package. Let's start by connecting to a camera. I'll go under the camera menu, choose select, and Examiner is going to find all the IR cameras currently connected to my computer. Today I have an SC660 connected through Firewire, an SC655 connected through USB, and an SC6700 connected through Gigabit Ethernet. I choose the SC6700, click connect, and in a few seconds I'll see a live IR image streaming into my image viewer. Let's do some image enhancement. I'm going to add a color palette to the image by going to the view menu, palette, and choosing from any number of color palettes available to me. Down under the image enhancement menu, you'll see that there's a histogram showing a distribution of all the pixels within the field of view of the camera. If I want to adjust the level, I simply click in the middle and adjust it left or right. If I wish to adjust the span, I can grab the endpoints and tighten them up as well. Today I'm going to do an auto scale. I also have some image enhancement algorithms available to me. You'll see linear scale, plateau equalization, and FLIR's new proprietary digital detail enhancement. If I click on the DDE, you'll see that I get a lot more detail on the trace level components of my printed circuit board. Today I'm going to go ahead and use the plateau equalization. Once I have my image just how I like it, let's go ahead and record some data. I do this by going under the record menu, choosing edit record settings, and then I have the option to record to memory, record to disk, or record to disk periodically. Let's record to memory for four seconds. I'm going to choose a unique folder to record to. How about the demo folder under examiner data? Click OK and give it a unique name. Once I'm done, I can click OK, go back under the recording options, and choose record a movie. I'm going to turn on my printed circuit board at the same time so that I see some dynamic data in the recording. Once it records to memory, it's going to write the data to disk, and after that finishes, we'll be able to open up that file and do some analysis on the image or export the data. If I open up the tools bar on the left-hand side of the image, go under my recording directory, there's my recording file. I'll double-click on it, and in a few seconds, I'll see the recording start playing back. I have quite a few different playback options. I can play forwards, play backwards, fast backwards, fast forwards, or I can jump to the ends of the movie file. If there's a particular frame that I'm interested in, I can grab the cursor and slide it up back and forth along the movie, or I can actually type in an exact frame that I want to go to. Let's say frame 400. I'll start playing the movie again and let's do some analysis. All of our analysis tools are over on the left hand side of the image. We'll see a box, circle, line profile, bendable line, polygon, freehand region of interest, or of course our spot cursors. Let's add a box around the chip right here in the middle of the image. Since the chip's at an angle, I'm going to go ahead and rotate my box as well. I'll spin that around. And let's add a line profile as well, maybe on this hot resistor up here in the corner. If I right -qu click on the line profile and go to properties, I can see all the different properties available for me to adjust. Let's change the name to line profile. And I'm going to give it a unique color as well. Let's choose orange. If I knew the emissivity of the resistor, I could type that in, or if I didn't, I could click on calculate type in the temperature of the resistor, let's say it's 40 degrees Celsius in this case, click calculate, and examiner will calculate the new emissivity for the resistor based on my input. When I'm done adjusting the properties, I click OK and I'm ready to go. Let's change the name on the box as well. I'm going to call it my box and we'll go ahead and leave red as the color. Click OK and I'm ready to start adding some charts and analysis graphs. You'll see that I have a statistics viewer available, a line profile plot, a temporal plot for time versus temperature plots, 
and a histogram available. Since we're selected on the the line profile, let's grab the profile plot. If I release it, I get a freestanding window that shows the line profile plot. Something new to Examiner, though, is customizable user interfaces. So if I click on the line profile chart again, I can, you'll notice I can dock it below or to the right of the image. If I dock it to the right of the image, now it becomes part of my main window. Let's go ahead and grab a statistics table as well. This time I'm going to drag it directly over to the line profile and I can dock it above, below, to the right or left of the line profile or I can even put it on top giving me a tabbed view. If I change my mind and I'd like the statistics table to be on top of the line profile I simply grab the tab, drag it again and place it on top. If I click on the box let's go ahead and see the temporal plot so we can do some time versus temperature analysis. I'm going to put this one on top of the st statistics viewer. Now that I'm starting to chart out the data, what if I want to export it to a separate spreadsheet program or another program that would like to do analysis on the data? I can simply click on the two arrows at the top right corner of the chart or graph and you'll notice I can log the data set directly to a file or I can save it. If I save it, I can save it as a bitmap or a CSV file, which is a comma-separated value file. This allows me to export the data and then open it with any spreadsheet program or other program that can read the comma-separated value file format. Other great ways to export data can be found under the File menu, Export, and we'll see options such as exporting the movie as a Windows media file, or we can export the current image as, again, a comma-separated value file, a bitmap, a PNG, a JPEG, a TIFF, and a lot of other options available. This makes sharing data or creating custom reports very easy with Examiner. One of the most revolutionary new features for sharing data in Examiner is called self-viewing files. If I go into the Tools menu, go to Make Self-Viewing File, it takes the entire Examiner program, wraps around the data set that you've selected, and creates a single executable file that you can share with customers or colleagues. All they have to do is double click on the executable file and they'll have the full examiner program with the data set you sent them. It's the best way to share data and allow them the full analysis tools that we've been using here today. One of the best features about examiner though is that it's very powerful but yet easy to use. So if we start getting rid of all of our analysis tools and charts and go to Camera Connect, you'll notice how simple it is to get right back to a beautiful IR image for simple analysis and data collection. Thank you for listening today. And if you have any further questions, please contact FLIR Systems.